Hi, I'm Tom, and welcome to my workroom. This is where I work, breathing life into models that were once just plastic. Bringing a model to life is, of course, the real challenge to painting, and I can help you accomplish just that. The first step to model building is, of course, choosing the kit you intend to work on. After you've made that choice, carefully lay out the contents of the kit and inspect them. Make sure all the proper parts are there and there are no imperfections. At this point, you need to attempt to visualize the steps you intend to take so your progression from start to finish is a more enjoyable one. One of the most crucial steps in model building is the original preparation. Without first thinking through the steps you intend to take, you're already starting out in the dark. First examine your new kit for any imperfections, and then inspect the way it fits together so you'll know what to look for when you're ready to glue and putty. By test fitting your kit initially, you can more easily predict the future of your paint scheme. Also, it will be important to wash your kit in soap and water to remove any excess mold residue left over from the original production. For proper assembly, you will need a hobby knife, modeling putty, sandpaper, a flat needle file, a putty syringe, and a hair dryer. After inspecting your kit, you're ready for assembly. Your Horizon model is made of soft polyvinyl plastic which has special properties all its own. Aside from being unbreakable, polyvinyl is also heat susceptible. By passing a warm hair dryer over your kit or immersing it in hot water, you will soften the polyvinyl enough to easily trim it. Heat will also restore any warped, scrunched parts back in their original intended shape. After the polyvinyl is softened, you can proceed to cut out the unwanted parts from your model. For this, you will require a sharp hobby knife, and because of this, you will need to use extreme caution. A hobby knife must be treated with respect. You must always cut away from yourself. To remove non-moving parts of your model, begin your cuts as flush to the base of the cut as possible and slowly move the knife through the polyvinyl until the part falls off. Go back and carefully trim any excess if necessary. Movable parts will be identifiable by this plug. Carefully cut above the plug to keep the parts movable. A cyanoacrylate adhesive will be necessary to glue your kit together. Apply it conservatively to the surface. Press the parts together with firm pressure and hold them until the bond sets. You may wish to use an accelerator for your cyanoacrylate adhesive to make the glue dry instantly as well as achieving a much stronger bond. Simply squirt it onto the glued surface and wait for it to take effect. By building your kit in sub-assemblies, it will be easier to paint your kit as well as being much more thorough. Small parts such as heads and hands can be glued to a convenient empty paint bottle. This will also make it easier to paint and to handle. After assembling your model, you'll probably notice certain gaps between parts that you've assembled. These will need to be filled with putty put through a syringe for accuracy. Carefully pass the syringe along the crack, inserting putty deep inside the crevice. After the putty is set, you can pass your finger over, removing any excess and further smoothing out the putty. Inspect it once you've finished to make sure you've been complete and allow it plenty of time to dry nice and hard. Once that's completed, proceed with the needle file 
and carefully sand away the excess portions of putty. After the filing is complete, carefully fold a fine piece of sandpaper into a workable shape. With the sandpaper, carefully polish sand those areas your needle file may have left rough. This should finally and completely hide the seam when you continue to paint. When your assembly is complete, give your model a light coat of primer. This will give your paint a better base to adhere to later. Also, be aware that most primers are enamel-based. They will need to be sprayed very lightly on your kit to avoid damaging the polyvinyl. Allow it to dry completely before proceeding. Now that you've prepared your model, you're ready to begin painting. Your selection of brushes will be crucial. You will need a selection of flats, a round shader, and some fine point detail brushes. Also, it will be important to reference your paint schemes to really capture the look and personality of the subject. Comics, movie magazines, anatomy books, and artist color wheels will all serve as great paint references. Now let's get to some of the basics. Polyvinyl models need to be painted with an acrylic paint. This can be purchased at art stores or hobby stores. You may find, however, that the colors you seek are not commercially available, and you will need to mix them. Acrylic paint can be mixed into thousands of colors. To lighten a tone, simply use white or light gray, or to make one darker, add the same tone, or black. The original base coat is the most important part of any paint job. It's the foundation that you will work from. Also, referencing the color of your base coat will be crucial for accuracy. The base coat's color will determine the final outcome of your paint job. Also, it will be very important to get complete coverage with your base coat. Work the paint carefully and completely into all the crevices and nooks and crannies that you will find, such as this ear. You'll know you're finished when you can't see any more bare primer. To apply your base coat, use one of your broadest, flattest brushes. This will give you the best overall coverage. You'll also want to use long, smooth strokes. This will give your finished paint a much smoother quality. A thoroughly completed base coat will better serve the special techniques you'll want to use later. Dry brushing is one of the easiest techniques to master and its uses are endless. Dry brushing can help create texture on clothing, subtle highlights, better metallics, and all manner of special touches. Start with a white piece of cardstock. Take your wide, flat bristle brush and gently begin stroking paint against the surface. You want to continue until you see the paint beginning to become dry and a very streaky, dusty look resulting. This is the effect you're looking for. Remember that dry brushing is a dark to light process. Over a darker base coat, you'll want to use lighter tones to dry brush your highlights. This being the end result. Let's see it in action. A darker cream colored base coat is then dry brushed over with a lighter tan, gently stroking against the contours. By adding a lighter tone, you'll further pick up the contrasting areas resulting in a very realistic, dry fabric sort of look. Also, dry brushing can be done over a completely different color for a whole range of different looks. The same process applies, moving from a darker tone to a lighter one, simply changing the hue as you progress.
flesh can also be dry brushed in a much more subtle way, starting with the base coat and proceeding with a very subtle, lighter tone of the same quality. In some instances, you'll want to be more graphic, like in the case of this monstrous mole man. That way you'll achieve a much more inhuman look. As you can see, the process of dark to light has been thoroughly adhered to. Now remember, for the best texture, you want just a very small amount of paint on the brush and you want to gently stroke the surface. Too much paint will result in this. When working with metallics, you'll want to base coat with black first for silver, or in the case of gold, you'll want to use black or dark brown. Once that's accomplished, then proceed to work your dry brushed metallic over the surface. In the case of metallics, you could be quite a bit more heavy handed. The object here is to get a complete coverage while maintaining the integrity of the deep shadows. When dry brushing metallics, you'll notice a much more graphic result. Details will spring forth from the surface as you continue to cover. Varying on how hard you press down when you dry brush, you can change or alter the look of your metallic. A light dusting will give you a very pewter sort of a look, or an even aged metal. The harder you apply, the more chrome or new the metal will appear. In the end, you should have completely covered your base coat, except for the fine shadows it will give you. Washing is a more complicated technique, but with a little patience, you will get results. A wash can create subtle or graphic highlights, tint or create fine details like mouths, eyes, or wounds. Basically, all a wash is is thin down, watery paint. To create one, simply start with your base color and begin adding some light tones that you intend to mix into your final outcome. Occasionally adding water to thin down the mixture. You'll find that artist inks make excellent wash ingredients as well as just paint. Just about anything with color that can add to a water solution would work effectively. Occasionally, stir the mixture to keep it consistent. Add color as you see fit, but consider what your wash is being used for. The one I'm mixing up now is for flesh. You'll notice that I use that color as well in creating the wash. This will help the wash blend much easier with your original base coat. Remember now to continually mix your wash. Your color should now become more consistent. It should be much easier to see what your end result will be. You're looking for a very compatible color with your base coat, remember. Once you feel your wash is mixed, you'll want to test it. Again, white cardboard is best for a true color. Simply stroke the wash out onto the white paper and check for the transparent color that you originally conceived. To apply your wash, simply dip your brush into the thin down mixture and begin stroking the wet wash over the surface allowing it to run into all the cracks and crevices. Be careful, however, not to slop it on. An excess wash will puddle up on the surface. Be very careful to simply smooth it over the entire area. Remember also that wash is a light to dark process. By beginning with a light color, you gently move in and add your dark shadows. Remember, when applying your wash, slop it on and be complete. There's no need to be neat. 
Also, you may wish to soften your wash by gently dry brushing some of your base color back over it. Then you will want to apply your wash more specifically by using a fine point brush and a very small amount of wash, carefully and strategically place your wash exactly where you want it. This is where you will begin to softly highlight areas. Carefully place your shadows where they belong. Also, at this stage, you may wish to scroll roll your brush to carefully rub out any of the wash lines that may result. Smooth textured surfaces will require a different approach. Begin by applying some of your wash, and follow that with a 50-50 mixture of alcohol and water. This will help the wash run more easily over the slick surface. Then simply proceed to move the wash in a bathing motion over the entire surface, allowing the wash to run into the cracks and tinting all the surfaces. You'll need to maintain the process here because you will find that the wash may start to pool up on you. By continuing to move it around, it will never be in any one place long enough to do that. After the initial color, you'll want to move in with a little bit heavier handed approach. Punch in your highlights with a darker wash. Around the eyes, the nose, and the lips is also a good place to use this technique. You can also use your wash to help accent the expression of your character. A wash can also be used on hair. Simply apply it and let it run into all the crevices. Aside from artist inks, you can also use paint to make a wash. In this instance, again you'll need to use your 50-50 alcohol water mixture, and you'll want to simply bleed paint into that same mixture. Notice how you achieve the same transparent look as before. You can also add different colors to it to change the tone, even when it's on the surface of the work. By continuing to add your thin down alcohol mixture, you also make the wash go a lot further. By using a wash of a contrasting color to the base coat, you can create some interesting effects. In this case, by working purple and red in and around the eyes, it will create a more intense look to the character. When using a wash for this type of detailed work, remember to use only a little bit of wash on your brush and to carefully dab it onto the surface, being careful to watch for the lines where the wash will end. This is where you may get a hard line. You want to go back and softly remove those. Then you can proceed to add in more intense color. As long as you're prepared to soften it up, you can add it as darkly as you wish. Again, by rolling the brush, you will soften the lines of the wash.
Now your model should be coming to life. You'll now need those fine detail brushes to finish things like eyes, teeth, toenails, and all those little special effects. This is where your patience, reference, and steady hand will pay off. Let's start with an eye. Begin with a sort of pink burgundy color and apply that to the whole inside area of the eye. After that's dried, proceed with an ivory white. Avoid using a stark white as it'll be far too bright. Make sure that you leave just a hint of the red on the outer rim of the eye. When that is dried, proceed with a light pink wash. And return with the same ivory white as before, highlighting the eye center. Then, using black or a similar dark color, block in the eye pupil. When you've chosen an eye color, proceed to put a small crescent ring around the outside of the pupil. And highlight that with a whiter color. Finally, put a black dot in the center Finish it off. Some eyes will be entirely inhuman. However, the same techniques will apply. Give the main body of the eye a basic coat, wash that if you desire, and then proceed to block in the pupil. For lips, Tint some of your original flesh-colored wash with a little bit of pink and slightly wash onto the lips. Be careful not to do it too directly or it will look much like lipstick. When painting gore or wounded areas, you'll again need to use a pink burgundy sort of color. You really do not wish to use red here as that will be highly unrealistic. Remember, this is much like a base coat, so you will need to carefully and accurately cover everything. Remember to get even the smallest little details. When that is dry, go ahead and accent all those same areas with a lighter dry brushing. Then move in with a bloody wash. To create this, take a deep red and mix it with brown. You should come up with a very close color to blood. Then, just like in the earlier sections, begin to wash it on all those areas. In many cases, you will want to be a little bit messy Slather it all over every area you can find that would be appropriate. Your blood wash can also be used on untreated areas to catch a different type of wounded effect. When painting claws or toenails, begin with a rich caramel brown, coating the entire surface. Then proceed with a light ivory, gently streaking the color over the surface of the nail. When that's dry, move in with a dark sepia wash, applying it rather heavily to the base. Then, with your alcohol water mix, gently streak the brush out over the surface of the nail. This will break up the base color and also tint the rest of the nail rather realistically. When painting teeth, use the same caramel brown that you did on your toenails, gently and carefully covering each and every tooth. When that is dried, move in with a light tan, gently streaking each tooth, one after another.
finally, with a light ivory, move in and very gently streak in just the bases of the teeth. In this instance as well, white is definitely not an appropriate color for teeth. By using ivory, you will get a much more realistic look. To make teeth much more grungy and disgusting, proceed just like we did before. Start out with your caramel brown, carefully coating each and every tooth. Then come back and block in every tooth with a nice light tan. Finally, accent each tooth with a little bit of light ivory. And to top it off, move in with a deep dark reddish brown wash. Let that soak in around every tooth. When painting creature teeth, you may find that using a wash more predominantly works a much better. First, begin with a tan base coat and apply to the base of the tooth a dark sepia wash. Block in the entire base of the tooth. Then, with your water alcohol mixture, begin to break up the tone at the base of the tooth by dragging it up onto the rest of the tooth's surfaces. You should be able to get a nice even tone over the middle portion of the tooth as well. You can then go back and punch in a little darker tone at the base. When your wash is done and dry, you can move in and cap each tooth with just a touch of light ivory. Also note that if you use an amber wash, you'll get younger teeth, and if you use a dark sepia tone, you'll get an older one, like the one on the left. When detailing with metallics, remember you still need to base coat it with either a black for silver or a dark brownish black tone for gold. Again, much like all your base coats, make sure you cover everything thoroughly. You can then dry brush your detailing metallic, being a bit more careful than you were before not to get those areas you don't wish covered. Or you can apply it directly with a fine point brush to just exactly those areas that demand it. Also, with a fine point brush, you can slightly dry brush those very fine areas. Make sure you double check that you've gotten every area. When working with hair, carefully base tone the hair area. Avoid making the hairline looking too solid though. After completely base coating, move in and dry brush with a lighter tone against the highlighted areas. For eyebrows, thin down the same base tone and carefully wash it onto the area for a slightly more transparent look. When painting hair with a wash, Remember to carefully let all the wash run into every crack on the head. When the wash is dry, proceed to highlight the area with a light dry brushing.
While airbrushing is an art in itself, even a little mastery of this special tool will enhance your kit's appearance immeasurably. Now while there are many complex techniques to airbrushing, one of the most basic ones is the paint mixture. A good paint mixture will create a nice, fine, even spray. This will be accomplished by mixing water and alcohol into your acrylic paint. If your paint mixture is too thick, however, you will simply get a spattering, spotting effect, if anything at all. If the mixture is too thin, it will be far too runny for any use. Also, if it's too thin and you are too close, you will simply spatter your model. Remember, your paint and water mixture must be perfect. Now that you've got your primed model ready for painting, and your paint is mixed, your airbrush is basically ready to go. You'll find that doing a base coat with an airbrush is much nicer than using a brush. You'll get a nice, fine, thin layer of paint, and you'll be a lot smoother than any brush could ever produce. Much like before, carefully cover every aspect of your model. Now when thoroughly base coating your model with the airbrush, don't worry at all about covering over any of the other details. Because the paint is so thin, there's no way it will clog up any of the detail, and you'll simply be able to cover it over later. Also while base coating your model with the airbrush, you can also see and make sure that your paint mixture is adequate. It will come down smooth. Or if it's too thick or too thin, you will get all manner of spattering, sputtering effects. You'll find that most airbrushes can be fitted with all manner of different heads. When working fine detail, you'll want to get a nice fine needle and a similar head. Also, you could break some of the rules while airbrushing. In this case, brushing a completely different color over the base green. Here, by using pink, we're trying to outline and highlight the different veins on the body. You'll have to get very close to paint some of the fine details. That's why your paint mixture will have to be perfect. Also, mouths, eyes, insides of ears, all manner of effects can be highlighted with your airbrush. Take note of the deep shadowing on some of the vein areas. You'll find that your airbrush can achieve effects much like a dry brush by adding a lighter tone of the base tone you began with and gently working it over the top face surfaces, you'll be able to punch in some very light, subtle highlights. They won't be quite as textured as a dry brush, but you'll find that they are much more organic. When it's completed, you should have a very thorough, all-over organic texture. You'll also find that you can use your airbrush in the same way that you would use a wash, by applying darker highlights to those areas that you would shadow, such as the crease in this arm, and in this area of the shoulder. You'll also note that this effect is much cleaner, and in many ways, quite a bit simpler. When you've finished, you should have a multiple layer of shadows, ranging from the darks to the lights. You will then want to go back in and punch in those very last deep-seated areas with the darkest color. By moving in with this last addition of dark tones, you will really bring out all of the last little bits of muscle and extra added detail so that your finished model will really come to life. An easier way to treat human flesh is to use your airbrush by first base coating it with flesh and then carefully tinting and highlighting all the surfaces with a darker tan, you will do what it takes much more time to accomplish with a wash. 
by moving in a little closer and carefully plotting in the shadows, you will quite realistically shadow the face. A more complicated use for your airbrush in working with human flesh is adding soft, highlighted colors, like in this case with the Phantom, punching in a sort of bruised, burned look. This sort of effect will also require that your paint mixture is very, very carefully mixed. If it is not carefully mixed, you won't get the soft, shadowed look that you're seeking. Instead, you'll get a much harder, bolder line that will be very difficult to work with later. After completing your light highlights, you can very gently move in with a darker tone and carefully punch in some of the deep shadows. Your airbrush with the finest needle and head will also be able to accomplish quite fine detail work. For instance, the wound here on the Bride of Frankenstein. Also, you can gently highlight the areas such as the lips here, or the eyes, by very carefully moving your airbrush underneath the area desired. You'll also find that your airbrush is able to more deeply shadow those areas you have already dry brushed. By simply following the road map that your dry brushing has left for you, you can carefully move a darker tone into all the cracks and crevices that will more deeply shadow the whole model. While at times you may find airbrushing quite frustrating with all the mixing and problems that can result, you will no doubt find though that when everything happens, you will get results that are unbeatable. Not all kits have to be built the way they come out of the box. In fact, with a little imagination, you can pull off a one-of-a-kind look. An easy conversion is with the Punisher. By simply adding some parts to this gun and creating an entirely new one for this hand, you create an all-new look. A more complicated conversion would be this Robocop. By cutting him and using heat to change his position, you create an all-new pose. By adding extra model parts, you can create this damaged leg look to create an all-original model. When your kit is finished, you'll want to consider putting it in an environment or giving it a special protective coating to protect it. But before you do that, just to make sure you're really done, I like to do a little test on my finished kits by turning it upside down and looking in at all the crevices and cracks to make sure that paint has gotten everywhere. If it has, then you're really ready to proceed. Otherwise, finish them up and go on to finishing. Before being truly finished, you'll need to consider some of the sheens of the areas you've painted. Things such as the lips, the eyes, or other areas that would remain slick or shiny should have a gloss applied to them. Your last step will be to spray your model with a clear coating. This will protect the paint of your finished model. Painting is an enjoyable adventure, 
a challenge where you seek to create the personality or special look of your subject, and when you're finished, have something you can really be proud of sitting up on your shelf. So remember, never stop learning, and above all, always have fun.
Thank you.